What's up guys? In this video, what I want to do is show you how to solve these three trigonometric equations fast. And what I mean by fast is straight and to the point. I don't want to get into the weeds of over explaining the problem and showing you all the different ways we can look at it. I just want to explain exactly what you need to be able to know to solve these problems. Now, if you want some more examples just like these, or maybe just a little bit easier or a little bit more difficult, go ahead and check out the examples and resources I have for you down below. Now, once you are subscribed and you're ready to get started, that was a joke by the way, but if you haven't subscribed, you can definitely do that. Now that you're ready, let's go and get started with the first example. Okay, the first thing I notice in this example is I have a cosine of theta being multiplied by two and then being subtracted by the square root of three. So when you're solving trigonometric equations and you only have one trigonometric function, the first thing you want to focus on is using your inverse operations to isolate the trigonometric function. Okay, so now I have the trigonometric equation cosine of theta equals the square root of three over two. Now again, remember, I do not know what theta is. That's what we're trying to solve. Now I want to look at the solutions on the interval of zero to two pi as well as all solutions. But again, when we read this equation, what we're asking ourselves is cosine of what angle equals the square root of three over two. And the best way to answer that question is to go ahead and look on the unit circle. Now, the reason I plotted these two points so quickly is because again, remember the cosine of an angle represents the X coordinate of a point on the unit circle. These two points are on the unit circle and the X value is equal to a square root of three over two. So what exactly are these two angles? Well, again, it comes into knowing the unit circle and these two angles are going to be pi over six as well as five pi over six. Now that I want you to recognize when we're first solving this on an interval of zero to two pi, that is basically the interval of the whole unit circle. So the only two solutions or the only two angles that satisfy this equation on the unit circle are going to be when theta equals pi over six and when theta equals five pi over six. Now, the next one is usually when students get confused is what about when there's no restriction? We want to find all the solutions. Now, an easy way to understand that is looking at the graphical approach. But again, I want to keep things short and simple. So I'm going to focus on just looking at the unit circle. If I have the solution pi over six and I go ahead and add two pi, that's going to take me all the way on the circle and it's going to land exactly on the exact same angle that I originally had a solution. And guess what? I can keep on adding or subtracting two pi and it's going to keep on landing on this angle. So therefore, if I want to find all the solutions, I can say theta equals pi over six. And then I could say plus or minus two pi infinite many times. Now, mathematically, the way we want to write that is theta equals pi over six plus two pi n, where n can be any integer, meaning positive or negative number. Now, in the next example, you can see we have the exact same case here. We have five pi over six. However, again, if I go ahead and take my angle five pi over six and I do an extra revolution here, that's again going to take me to the same solution. And I could also go in the negative direction and I can keep on going around and around and around the circle. So I can add and subtract two pi infinite many times and it's still going to give me the exact same solution. If I want to take my solution of five pi over six, which is on the interval of zero to two pi, and I want to turn it to all solutions, I can add two pi n number of times, where again, n represents any integer. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, that is just a quick way to be able to identify the solutions. Again, number one, use your inverse operations. Number two, look for those solutions, look for the angles that satisfies that on the unit circle. And then you can just always add two pi n to find your infinite solutions. Now let's go and take a look at this example. Now you can see this is very similar setup to the previous example. We have one trigonometric function and we have some operations being applied. We have being multiplied by four. The sine is actually being squared and then subtracted by three. So again, we want to go ahead and use our inverse operations to solve. Now, again, sometimes it gets confusing with the squared. I remember with students, sometimes it might be helpful to just go ahead and rewrite this as a sine of theta quantity squared minus three equals zero to help you understand when to use your inverse operations. Okay. So now by using my inverse operations, I now have the equation sine of theta equals plus or minus the square root of three over two. So now we're looking for the sine of what angles where the y coordinate on the unit circle is equal to a positive square root of three over two and a negative square root of three over two. So again, having a knowledge of our unit circle is going to be very helpful to understand which of these angles work. Okay. So I quickly plotted these points. And again, if you want a kind of quick refresher of the unit circle, I knew that this point was one half comma square root of three over two. So the y coordinate was square root of three over two. And then notice what I did. I just reflected about the y axis. I reflected about the x axis and I reflected about the origin. So that's a quick and easy way to be able to find the other points where the coordinates are going to be the same. Now I just need to make sure I remember what exactly are these angles that land on these points on the unit circle. Those are going to be a pi over three, two pi over three, four pi over three, and five pi over three. So when we're looking for the solution set on zero to two pi, we can just say the sine of each one of these angles makes our y coordinate equal plus or minus square root of three over two. So all four of these angles are solutions on the restriction of zero to two pi, which again is just going to be the unit circle. So I can write that answer just using our set notation. I could easily write just all of these equal to theta individually, but when you have more than one solution, a lot of times using the set notation is used. So remember that kids, interval notation is good. All right, now when we're trying to find all the solutions, this is where students make the mistakes. So if you're looking at your phone, now is the time to pay attention. When we want to find all the solutions on an interval of negative infinity to positive infinity, one of the first things that students do and say, well, can we just take each of these solutions and add two pi? And the answer to that is absolutely. The easiest way to find all the solutions is to take each and every one of your solutions 
solutions that you found on zero to two pi and just add two pi n to them. However, that is not the most simplified result. Therefore, when you're taking like a test, a lot of times your teacher will want either a simplified answer or if you're taking like a multiple choice, those non-simplified answers are not going to be there. So we have to make sure we understand, yes, we can always add two pi, which is just extra revolutions, but we also want to look for how is a way that we can simplify our approach. So again, what I like to do is look at the first answer. We know that sine of pi over three equals the square root of three or two. So this is my first answer. To get to my next answer, that looks like it's pi over three. And if I were to add another pi over three, that would give me to three pi over three. But again, that is not a solution. So what I do recognize though, is what if I added a whole pi? That's going to be halfway around the circle. So if I took pi over three and I added pi, that takes me to a four pi over three, which again, guess what is a solution. And if I go ahead and add another pi to four pi over three, that will be actually a seven pi over three. But again, it still lands on this solution. So seven pi over three is also a solution. Rather than adding two pi n to pi over three and adding a two pi n to four pi over three, I can simply just take my first angle pi over three and just add pi n because I can add pi once, twice, three times, four times, five times, or I could go negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. So you can see how that is a simplified approach. So for the next solution, you can see the exact same thing is going on. I have two pi over three. And if I add a pi to it, well, that's going to take me to my next solution. So therefore I can keep on adding a pi n to my two pi over three. Now, a big question my students will ask, well, why did you pick pi over three? Couldn't you have picked any one of those angles and add a pi n to it? And yes, you could. Typically when we're looking at a simplified answer, we're looking for the smallest positive angle to start with and then adding our pi or our two pi n from there. So that's why I chose pi over three plus pi n and two pi over three plus pi n. But you can see by adding the pi n to both of those two angles, I was able to satisfy all the solutions that would occur for this equation. All right, now in this last example, you can't use your inverse operations. And one of the biggest mistakes I'll still see the students make is they like inverse operations. So in this last example, you can see I have a tangent cubed of theta minus a tangent of theta. Now, again, since we just did two pro examples with using inverse operations, guess what students are going to do? They're going to want to add the tangent of theta to the other side and then somehow try to figure out. We get caught a lot of times in using inverse operations where we think that's the only way to solve a problem like this. But when you have a trigonometric equation with more than one function, you're going to want to look to using factoring. So just like if I had this equation of x cubed minus x equals zero, I could factor out an x, right? And that would leave me with an x squared minus one is equal to zero. So all we're doing is we're using this with a tangent of thetas. Now, again, remember, I can rewrite that tangent of theta as being a quantity cubed minus a tangent of theta. Now, you probably only need to do that a couple times before you kind of get used to this new notation. But hopefully you recognize I can factor out this tangent of theta just like I can factor out an x. So by doing that, I get a tangent of theta times a tangent squared of theta minus one equals zero. Now, the reason why we did this for quadratics is because then we can use what we call the zero product property. Whenever you have a product equal to zero, you can set each factor equal to zero. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'll say, all right, tangent of theta equals zero and a tangent squared of theta minus one equals zero. And guess what? The reason why this is so important is this equation is already done, right? Tangent of theta equals zero. And this equation, now I only have one trigonometric function. So now I can go back to actually using those inverse operations we are used to from the previous two examples. Okay. So now we have the tangent of theta equals zero and the tangent of theta equals a plus or minus one. So now we have to go back to our unit circle and recognize when are these solutions happening? So again, knowing the unit circle is very helpful when solving trigonometric equations. So these are all of the solutions. And again, the reason why tangent of theta equals zero, because remember on the unit circle, tangent is the y coordinate over the x coordinate, right? Where sine is y, cosine is x, tangent is y over x. So we can't divide by zero. So we can't have x equal to zero. So the only two values where my y is going to be zero, that's going to make this equation true, are going to be at the angle at zero as well as at pi. So if we're going to first start with our interval of zero to two pi, I'm just going to go ahead again and use my set notation to write those down. So we have zero and pi. Now we need to go back and know these. Now, the reason why these stuck out to me is because when tangent of theta, when y over x is equal to one, that means it has to be the exact same coordinate points. Like three over three is equal to one. Two over two is equal to one. Square root of two divided by square root of two is going to be one. But again, we're not just looking for one. We're looking for plus or minus. So that's going to be all of these angles. And hopefully you recognize that these are going to be pi over four, three pi over four, five pi over four, and seven pi over four. So now I'll just go and add them to my set notation. And we have now found all of the solutions on the interval of zero to two pi. Now to wrap up the problem, to look for all the solutions on an interval of negative infinity to infinity, again, we want to look for any patterns. We don't want to add two pi n to all these solutions. That's a lot of writing out. So the first thing I notice is between zero and pi, they have a difference of pi and I can keep on adding or subtracting pi n. So my first solution I can write as a theta equals a zero plus a pi n. Now, do we really need to write zero plus pi n or could we just say pi n? And then for last example, I want you to recognize if pi over four is my first answer, then I can add a two pi over four to get to three pi over four. I can add another two pi over four to get to five pi over four. I can add another two pi over four to get me seven pi over four. And I can keep on adding a two pi over four. Every single time I add a two pi over four, that takes me to my next solution. And again, this 
this could work in positive as well as in negative direction. Therefore, I can satisfy all four of these solutions infinitely by two pi over four or pi over four plus pi halves n. So there it goes, ladies and gentlemen. I hope this was helpful. Again, if you want more examples or resources, check the playlist I have for you down below. Otherwise, I look forward to helping you on the next video I have for you available right here.